right, uh, hello everybody. Um, welcome to our second live stream here publicly. Um, I'm gonna make a quick introduction here. My name is Michael McMain. I'm the CEO, founder, and creative director of Lichdom, um, working for Xaviant. And I have with me Jim Weinhart. Jim, why don't you introduce Hi, yourself? Hi, I'm Jim Weinhart. I'm uh, the lead systems designer here at Xaviant, working on Lichdom. So uh, we're, um, if, if for those of you that were with us last week on the play test, um, we've made a few changes and we're going to be talking about some of those changes as the uh, players get going here. They're in the process of moving to their seats now, so we'll be turning their streams on here and, and making that live for you in just a, a couple of minutes. Um, so a couple of things, uh, if, if you saw what we're doing, and just to give you an overview of what we're trying to accomplish here, um, this effort is not necessarily so much about um, you know any kind of a marketing effort for us. It's really something that we're trying to build our play test community so that we could, because when you make a game like we're making, you know, we're making a first person, for those of you that don't know, we're making a first person RPG that has, uh, uh, it's a loot-based game, so uh, and, and it's a very deep RPG in that sense. So in order to get involved with loot and craft loot, there's a lot of hours that have to be put into a game like that, and it's hard to play test that in a one-hour session. So we're going to need our play testers that really are interested in the game to come back repetitively, routinely, and pick up from where they left off so they can get deeper and deeper in the game so we can explore um, you know what, what we're trying to accomplish with the, the loot based aspect of the game so if that's something that's interesting to you as a playtester if you've done it before or if you're planning on doing it we encourage you to participate in these streams um, and not only participate from watching but participate in chat with us because you if you play tested before you might see things that are different than, than they were before we'd like to hear some of your comments on that or your thoughts or your questions um, that would be beneficial for us so um, so yeah, as I mentioned, we're getting ready to go live here in just a couple of minutes, and uh, we will um, get our video up here. And Nate Fenham, you were going to sleep there, huh? Yeah, we had a little bit of uh, music there. Some of the music might have been lulling you to sleep when it was <laughs> nice and quiet, and hopefully when it picked up, it woke you up a little bit. <laughs> Got the intro of the game, <clears throat> little flyby thing that's happening. We have one of the playtesters is already running around in the world. Why don't you bring him to the front? Yeah. See that is. So lab six, yeah. Now, um, do those do those work right now? Okay, so yeah. because that was something that we just changed too. That's a pretty fundamental change for us that we're trying. We'll see how this works out. So I'm going to explain the health system for those of you that are watching because it's sometimes harder to understand the mechanic of something when you're watching it versus the mechanic of seeing it. Um, the uh, um, on the left, the vertical bar you see, that the green bar is a is your shield. It's your magical shield that allows you to uh, absorb damage. In our game, there is no healing in the game. You don't have a spell for healing or anything like that. So it's about you making sure you don't lose that magical shield because if you do, you're dead. Um, whatever hits you kills you after that point. So your shield has three. Uh, uh, shells to it, if I'll say, if is the best way to describe it. So there's three layers to your shield, and when you lose a layer, you don't get that layer back again until you can replenish it. And um, what we've done is we've created these little uh, things that, uh, if you run up to them and click on them, they will give you uh, elements of your shield back. That's loot. That fly, that loot is different. That looks better. Yeah, yeah. We went and, and that's all the colors. that's color coded in the sense of that was a piece of green loot yep. that he got there. So that's cool. That is that is a bit better than what it looked like before. Before we had it a little, the icon was a little bit too big, and uh, and it actually flew up in the air before it yeah. came to you. Um, it's funny though that color happens to match perfectly with the color of the shield. Mm -hmm. Those obviously need to be yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Hey, David, how's it going? We're happy you're here too. So we changed him there, didn't we, Jim? Why don't you tell us a little it's bit? It's actually not him. Oh, it's him. It's a different it's, one. Yeah, that's that's our. Uh, he's based off of a sniper archetype. Uh, he tries to keep a distance. He can use a lot of the high points in the level, right? Uh, to climb up and get a better vantage point on the player. 
Uh, and then we have another ranged enemy that we've made some pretty big changes to since the last play test that'll be coming up shortly. Right. When he's in the new crafting UI. So Gio says um, the whip seems to grab a lot more. Yeah, we've changed that, um, and we may even it speed that up a little bit more. We have some plans to try to make that enemy even more visceral. That's the enemy, we call it the lasher, yep. that um, strikes out at you, grabs you, and yanks you into the middle of combat. And uh, we may even have things that happen where you get kicked back and you're prone on the ground or you know things yeah. like that. So we want that enemy to be somewhat of a nuisance. Um, I spent most of Tuesday actually working on getting her to grab you or him to grab you more often, um, right. tweaking the projectile. And, and hi there, Herzi, it's good to see you. And those of you that are in chat and talking, if you have played this before, feel free to say something in chat, because so, obviously we don't know your, your names necessarily. Um, and if you're a friend and family, you can say that too. <laughs> so the combat text part that we eliminated we, was just off the boss, right? Yeah, it's just okay. uh, rage and concentration broken. One of the changes we made last week was to the way our AOEs work. We made two fundamental changes to them that made them much more usable because we found they weren't getting used at all. Um, the first thing we did is we sped up the intro animation um, that allows you to get them off. So it went from somewhere around three seconds to around two seconds yeah. right, to get the animation off. And then the second thing we did is that if you use that defensive maneuver, that blink, when you're, you know, do that magical blink forward, backward, left or right, that you're not losing the holding of your spell. So if you've already drawn it on the ground and you have it ready to be positioned, you can still blink and then let it go and not lose it. And those two changes mean that they get used a lot more. It also makes them quite a bit more powerful. Yeah. Received ice. Okay, so that's built into the loot experience yeah, now anytime, as you're going through it? Anytime you get a core, we actually notify at the center of the screen. Let's switch to one of the other uh, yep. players there for a minute. Let's go to hey, Chris, it's good to see you. Now we can put a, a name with a moniker there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we worked oh, very, very hard on the look of the game. Um, we're very pleased with where it's at right now. Hey, head clap. Cool. This is head clap's first time being here. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I was talking before we went live here. Um, I used to teach class in uh, university, and I always tried to take pride in trying to figure out how to say people's names, right? Yeah. Because um, you know, it's it's always rough when you're a teacher and you're looking at the at the list and you're like, I don't know how to say this name. And I was always pretty good at it, but it's it's a little harder with some of the monikers. Oh yeah. You don't, you don't know what somebody's going for, what they're trying to make yep. there. He's got all his final animations in now too. Those are going to be a little different from last time. Okay. We wanted to telegraph his sword swings more to where they weren't as close up, but reached more into the player's field. Paragon, field how you doing? I really like the new UI a lot. Yeah, it's much easier to use, I think. And one of the things we're still going to do, I talked to Craig about this today, is if you look at fire as an example, we're going to put color-coded numbers that show you how many augments according to rarity that you have for that core. Nice. So if you look at it and you say, I've got two blues and four greens for yeah, you fire. Know you drill down I need, I, need to, I need to make a fire. Yes. Yep. That's really cool. Oh, cool. OK. I said I said Guido's name correct. Um, so Hank has a question. Uh, sorry for being off topic, but will there be a mod SDK for Lichdom? So we do have plans to, we haven't announced anything yet. And I'm not going to go into detail, but we do have plans to allow some sort of player customized content. Since we're in CryEngine, we get some of that for free. Um, and we just want to make sure that we, you know, you know, create the right experience for that. It probably won't come out on release. It'll probably follow it up with the DLC release, but it would I, I don't expect it to be much longer mm -hmm. after the release of the game. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Herzine, that's thanks. We, uh, he was saying the UI looks a lot better. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit, a little bit easier to understand.
I really like the way the loot comes in now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Heklat's going to be a day one buy. Excellent. It's going to be interesting to see how people react to the new health UI. Yeah, like they can tell now, mm -hmm. right? That's another problem that we had. We went through a lot of iterations with the health system because, um, you know, it was very difficult for people to understand what we were trying to accomplish there. We had a lot of people playing, and I, and I, would, I don't just mean external people, like us internally, right? Yeah. We'd have yeah. some of our own employees sit down to play it and then realize, how come I died? Yeah. You know, because you don't know where your health is at. So um, what we have now is, uh, is, is much more understandable. Yeah, with health, communication is, yeah, is everything. Yeah, it's Yeah, Andy, I agree. He's saying he's happy with the way the loot and uh, video effects path turns out. Yeah, the way it looks when it drops out is much better. Um, so the health, uh, and are we, I, I can't remember, I had a conversation with Tim about this. Are we, we still do a regen within PIP. Yes. Yes. So, um, uh, Guillo, the, the, the health does still regenerate within a PIP but you don't gain a pip until you go to one of those little shield orbs that are now planted throughout the level and use them. So that's how you get your shield back. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, and one of the things we think we're going to do too, like right now, are, do, are we still preventing the player from doing any crafting unless they're at the 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 what we were calling vortex pools? I don't know what we'll ultimately call them, but the the, the vertical rock. They're free to craft anywhere. Now. Anywhere they yep. want. Yeah. So that's another one of the things that we changed. We were thinking originally about going Dark Souls ish, meaning you got to make your decisions at a checkpoint, and then once you make that decision, you're stuck with that decision until the next checkpoint. But we we are experimenting with just letting the player craft anywhere they want to without having to worry, worry about that. Um, Headclot, this is a magic only game, so you will just be using magic. There is no weapons in the game uh, for the player. <laughs> there's yeah, a the lot of weapons. The enemies have quite a few. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of weapons that hit the player, but none of the player uses. Uh, Horizon, uh yeah, there's a few high resers. Uh, that's that's cool. Yeah, we definitely, uh, definitely need to, to do some game dev stuff. So yeah, Headclad, in, in keeping with that theme, what we're trying to do is we're trying to demonstrate what a game is like when magic is literally unchained. That you don't, it's not bound by being balanced to a sword and a, uh, you know, a dagger. It is literally what if a mage is truly one of the most powerful things the world has seen. And we don't have to worry about uh, you know, doing the balancing act. Um, and that's, that's what our, our goal is. Part of that comes from the fact that I love playing mages. I play mages in almost every game I play. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we haven't experimented a lot with is difficulty. We experiment with the difficulty in the sense of we tweak it a little bit for our play tests because we treat our play tests as players that have obviously never encountered the game before and we try to get feedback on what difficulty they think we're shooting for, but um, uh, we don't have different difficulties in yet. But we have some cool ideas of what to do with difficulty that's not related to just health, right? Yeah, yeah, and we're actually going to hopefully start rolling some of that out soon in one of the next play tests. Like one of the things we're thinking about, or that, that's pretty much a given, is your your AOEs will hurt yourself in the harder difficulty, right? So if you put down your own frost AOE and a lasher grabs you and pulls you through it, you're going to get frozen solid. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. It's the, the Force Unleashed with a, that's, uh, the head clap. that's a good good analogy there. He's saying it's like Force Unleashed without the lightsaber and without the Star Wars statement. It's exactly the same as Force Unleashed, except different. <laughs> I think some people have trouble realizing that they've actually frozen the enemies at first. It's hard. We, I think we might need a bigger, a, yeah, we might need a bigger ice blocky yeah. type of thing to, to sell that a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's interesting. The original... DA, what is DA again? Dragon Age? Dragon Age, oh yeah, yeah. yeah the original Dragon Age. Yeah, um, 
obviously different in the sense that um, and it's interesting when you look at the original Dragon Age because I played Dragon Age first on the PC, which meant it played very much like a Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah. Oh and yeah. That was great. I mm-hmm. I love that experience. And then um, on the Xbox, it was very different for me. I played, you know, because the Xbox is a very different experience. But um, that was a great game. Just absolutely great. So um, we will have boss fights. Um, our approach. So I'll I'll say this. You will see a boss fight in the stream. There's a boss at the end of this level. Yep. Um, and our approach to bosses, the one thing I think I'll tell you is that um, our goal is to try to make a boss that's meaningful and interesting but isn't like just a completely repetitive pattern. It's that the boss has skills and he uses these skills dynamically and the difficulty determines how well he uses the skills. The other thing is that um, one thing I've never really liked about games, especially games with magic, is some of the most interesting magic that you get in a game, they automatically make the boss immune to those spells, yep. right? Like you know, your charms or your freezes or whatever, because it makes it too trivial. And so we've en- enabled an interesting mechanic um, where the bosses will berserk if they're crowd controlled too often, and then they become much harder to kill. And we're still tweaking that. You're going to see, those of you that play tested last week, you're going to see a very big difference. Uh, I think hopefully this week yeah. and, and we're hoping that some of that like we've taken out some of the uh, combat text that tells you how the enrage is happening and trying to deliver it um, more deliberately in the way the, the character model works and the animations work and so we'll see how that uh, plays out when the players get to that and yeah I agree Andy Andy's saying the new crafting screen looks Definitely. good it does it looks really really good So uh, Head Clot is asking if there's going to be multiplayer element to Lichdom. Um, we are, we do not have any immediate plans for multiplayer. Obviously, that is something we would very, very much like to see. Um, but uh, on release, there will not be. It's a single player experience that we're crafting. However, we do have some tentative plans of things we could do. And no, no, Head Clot, we love these questions. Yeah, don't, that's, don't, that's don't, yeah. the chat. Yeah, no, please don't, don't, don't be worried about answering anything or asking anything. But. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we, this is our first title for our studio. We want to make sure that we do what we think we can accomplish the best. So that's what we're focused on single player. But I can tell you right now, we all want multiplayer in there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we all want to see that. So definitely uh, at some point. Man, I actually, right before the play test, brought down their damage because they can shoot as much as they can. Oh, the, the um, yeah. what do we call them? The that's the bone sni- bolter. The bone bolter, yeah. And they're okay. still doing. Yeah, look, he's shooting, he's shooting like crazy. Uh, yeah, so Par- Paragon, uh, the Lichdom will be released on Steam. That is correct. We have not announced the release date yet, but it will be uh, announced within the next few weeks. Um, yeah, this is the area where... Oh, you died from the bug spells? <laughs> Wait, how, how did he die from the bugs? What happened there? You mean the corruption killed you? Is that what you mean, Guillo? We were saying he died from the bug spells there. Shouldn't have been able to. Uh, will there be some, so we haven't. Uh, oh. The only thing we've accomplished at this point is Steam, but we we plan to release on every digital outlet that we can possibly release on. Um, so, Guido, what was it you died from? You said you died from the bug spells. Uh, but the the healer, or the, excuse me, the shielder uses uh, corruption. Oh, yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. You. from her bug yep. spells. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. We actually, I made a very big change to her uh, last night. That'll be interesting to see. Oh, I see Tim is saying that the corruption had a bug that would allow the bugs to multiply <laughs> indefinitely. That could be considered a bug or a feature, yeah. depending on whether yeah. it's coming from the player or the enemy. How well did it look? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this. So right now, how many spells are they rolling with right now? They sh- should have fire, ice, lightning, and corruption right so now. So let's go through and see. What, I see some fire and some ice here, yeah. right? Yeah. And Blaine, what do we have all oh, else going on in some of the other screens? We got some crafting going down oh. here on the bottom left too. Four. And gravity, yes. Josh is reminding us that we have gravity. <laughs> but Josh can't be. I don't know if they have Josh gravity at this test. point yet. Oh, they don't have it yet. Uh, this guy until once he gets in the next area, he gets uh, the next cores will be rolled out. Okay. So 
So we see some lightning going on there. It's funny because yep. we haven't actually, in the previous playtests, I don't think I've seen many people use lightning. Yeah. It's, it hasn't been used that much. And it's so actually you, now with these range guys shooting as much as they do, and because they're moving and shooting, lightning is really good because you get that instant hit, you get the interrupt, you get good damage, uh -huh. and it's going to hit them. You don't have to worry yes. about charging a projectile, yeah. throwing it. It's... So Camacho Saint asked a question, what kind of attacks can we expect outside of the standard gunfire type attacks? Everything seems very similar in contrast to the bigger power seen in Bioshock Infinite. So one of the things that we plan to have, our, our philosophy or our approach to the spell casting is that when a mage chooses to cast a spell, so our, our and I'm not going to go into the lore of the game necessarily, but our player casts spells slightly differently, but he what he's doing when you craft a spell, you're crafting a spell that a mage would have cast on the fly normally, and then you have that spell at, at your fingertips. So the way magic works is a mage envisions the ability, let's say he's going to use fire, and he shapes it how he wants to shape it, right? He can use it any way he wants to. So we plan to have a, a, a significant number of shapes in the game. Right now, what you're seeing here is predominantly what we call targeted area of effect and uh, cone. Um, we plan to have uh, or I guess blast is, yeah. is the one that we have in here. We plan to have um, some some other different ones. We have trap in here right now, which is an area of effect that waits to delay when somebody hits it. We plan to have like a wave, so something can emanate out from you in a wave. And the point is that whatever spell you're using, they all work in those different shapes. And so that's part of your crafting process as you make an instance of the spell with the shape and the augments to get the power that you want. Yeah, it's very much a chemistry set. It's alchemy. You're 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 building out of these unique things. Uh, tessellation, we're actually going to no, start... Let's say the question for oh, so Kenzo so asked if we're using tessellation. Uh, I know that we were just doing a little bit of research this week to see how much tessellation we can, we can move forward with, and the results were really good. So I think that you'll see... Uh, you'll see it make it into one of our builds in the future. And Headclot is asking, um, will the six system specs be released in the next few weeks? Yes, when we uh, announce the release date of the game, we'll also be releasing the system specs and some other details about the game. Okay, Nate Phantom, he's going to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And... Uh, Maybe you can tune in for another one uh, next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we just missed it. What got him? Um, no, right now our only target is PC. Um, we will. Our, our ultimate goal is also to be on consoles, but initially we are a PC Steam uh, release right now. That was an answer to Headclot's question about whether we're supporting Linux and Mac. So for those of you that have just tuned in, um, I, this is Michael McMain. I'm the CEO and founder and creative director of Xaviant, and uh, this is our title Lichdom that we're playtesting, and I have with me in the studio. I'm Jim Weinhardt, lead systems designer here. So, uh, Rashad, or no, Hi Rez Rashad, Hi Rashad. Yeah. yeah, Rashad. Um, we are, th this game is more level-based. It's more of a crafted experience, but it's, it's levels with some decision making or some branching points, so it doesn't feel quite so linear, but it is a crafted experience in that, in that sense. He was asking if it was an open world or yeah. if it was level based. Yeah, we're seeing more lightning this time. Yeah. So how do we, in this playtest, we're giving them the spells. Um, they start with fire. They quickly get ice. I believe so. And then uh, and then they get a choice of a couple. Then, like, at this point, they should have about five things in their yes. answer, right? Like, let's no, let's switch over here. So he uh, still only has fire and ice, right? But I think he's still in the beginning. Is that right? In the bottom left. Yes, but he's still fire and ice. Yeah, So that okay. means he's before the first transition. Well, he's in equipping, though. He could have more cores than that. He just might not have yeah, crafted, might crafted it. Um, let's see, Josh. That's uh, a good point. Headclot is saying the levels are beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much, Headclot. Um, so Josh is saying, worth mentioning for a few viewers, that the playtests tonight have never played the game before. That is correct. Yeah. Um, 
And that's a big part of uh, us figuring out how well we did our job, like how, how difficult is it for them to get through it and how difficult is it for them to understand it. Mm -hmm. We've also tweaked the difficulty of some of the enemies, right? They shoot faster, some yep. of them shoot. Uh, and that was in reaction to when we made our AOE changes, we made a lot of those changes last week and that made AOE so much more powerful mm -hmm. that it allowed us to tweak a couple of the enemies up and yeah. we might have tweaked them up a little bit too <laughs> hard, right? That's, that's easy to do in the studio. So he has fire, ice, lightning, gravity, and corruption. Okay. So David has five at the point he's yep. at in the level. So let's see. Um, Sean has a question. That spell equip page makes you want to get oh. in and just experiment. Yeah, that's the, that's the hope. You know, what we're after is somebody that like this is what I do right when I play loot games and you spend hours and hours pouring over your yep. build and your crafting and that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to go for there uh, head cloud is saying cried cried and I gave you a shout out on the forums yeah they've been uh, really really good partners for us there so they're great so he's using corruption and fire yep and then and back ice. here uh, she's right behind those rocks there she is ah uh, those are the the shielders okay. and one of the changes I made to her yesterday actually she makes so much sense being in the fray and for her to be able to do what she does really well, she has to be by her allies. But if she's always trying to, to make use of cover, it's you she's know there's no allies. goal. If, but if she's shielding everyone else, there's no reason why she shouldn't be able to shield herself. Yeah, so now she shields yep. herself. That's cool. And uh, yeah. she prefers to stick around her allies and, and work with them. Yeah, Guido is saying that the, um, the absorbing shield is yep. new. Yeah, she's... So that makes her a little bit tougher. You can't just you yeah. know, two shot her. And it, it makes her, she was always meant to be a priority target, and now she but, really gets called out. One thing I noticed, though, uh, you know what we should do? We should make her shield look different. Yeah. Because then you can tell the difference. You know, right now, I can't tell the difference between who's yeah, who there, I think the shielder or the shieldy. Eben was talking about that earlier today. Yeah, that'd be a good idea to, to color her shield yeah. slightly different or something. Ahead or behind there, I think. He's behind. He's, he's, in, he's, he's in the level pre or the area quite Yeah, previously. once he gets past that encounter there. Okay. <laughs> so he's using a lot of ice there. That's cool. See, Taylor just took out the lieutenant and now has additional spell cores. Oh, nice. So now he's got all kinds of crafting options. Yep. It's like I only had, because at this <laughs> point he had two spells he could use, right? Two cores he could yeah. make spells with. Now he's got five, so he's got some decision making to do. So as I mentioned before, the... Uh, the way the crafting works, obviously, it's so, somewhat explanatory, but you're picking a core, which we, we have a certain number of cores in the game, and um, and then you can shape them in different ways, and your shape drops as loot. So, uh, and some of them are rare, some of them are, are, are um, uncommons and so forth. And then, uh, and then you augment that loot. And that's just the very, very surface of the crafting. We have a, plans for a lot more depth in, in how that works there. Um, Guido is saying, yeah, let's see if he gets hooked on gravity. Yeah, because I know you liked that one uh, last <laughs> week quite a bit. Um, Josh is saying the new crafting screen icons look like candy. Tessa is <laughs> spending more time in those menus this yep. week, even though the functionality hasn't changed much yet. That's true. Let's see. Uh, Paragon X9. X9, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how long has the game been in development? So the studio has been... Let me think of how to explain mm -hmm. this. The studio has been working on developing our first game for quite a while but this game here has been in development for about a year and a half yep and uh, so by the time uh, yeah we're, we're looking at a roughly two and a half year ish type cycle mm -hmm. kind of is what we're doing at Blaine's at the boss yeah it's gonna be interesting so one of the things we're not doing here is we're not telling the player that the enrage is happening anymore when he's hitting the boss so there you go and so there he just yeah, you can see the, the flares. Yeah. 
and then now he's enraged, and, right? Nope, not yet. Oh no, he's so this is the there. one. I think that we do have by having the enraged colors the same as his projectile. When he goes off to cast, it can yeah. confuse you and make you think that he's so actually he's gone into enraged right now. Yeah, and there's the so there's the charge we yep. added. So, um, uh, Kamako Saint is asking if uh, he can customize his forearm clothing. We don't have any specific plans. That, that will change as you play the game. We, we, we do have the uh, opportunity to do some of those things, but I don't think we're going to let you necessarily customize that, um, that thing. We had some a lot of ideas, but a lot of it is going to depend on where we're at as we near the end of release. Some of that's going to be pushed under the, the back burner there. Um, the stream needs high resolution. Yeah, to be uh, uh, um, Rashad is saying it needs high resolution. We're we're actually li liking the fact that we can stream it. It's not necessarily higher resolution, so we can preserve some of that for our actual for yeah. official announcement of the game. Yeah. Um, when you'll see some more high resolution stuff come out on YouTube, Guillo says um, that's going to mean when he's it's going to be tough when he's wondering when he can't get away. Yeah, the charge is is much better. Makes him feel, and, and definitely the rage is much more readable, right? Yeah. The the key is going to be finding out though whether these players feel that there's a connection between I hit him with these spells that control him and it caused him to enrage because that's yeah. what we have to sell, and that's a hard thing to. Say. It's easy to tell a player that, but um, but we didn't we didn't do a good job of that before. It wasn't very obvious, and so we'll see if that we did a better job of that this time. Yes, uh, that's correct. Josh is saying that the boss charge is an example of something that came out of last week's playtest, and, and that's that's exactly right. Cool. Um, the cooldown has a, what is the time on that? It's a few seconds, right, between blinks? I think it's a little around two seconds. Two. That's what, that's what I was yeah. going to say. I think it's around two seconds. Wheel says it uh, doesn't seem like Blaine found the run button. <laughs> <laughs> 1.75 according to Tim. Are you sure it's not 1.74683? Because it could be. Uh, so uh, Paragon is asking us, what does the bar on the left-hand side of the screen represent? So um, that is your health system, and it's basically a magical shield or a barrier that's protecting you from damage. Our lore in the game is that there's no healing, so when you lose your layers of shield and you get hit, you're dead. Your game is, you're, you're, you're reloading. And each uh, level or each uh, layer of the shield will regenerate itself if it's left untouched. However, you will not get other shield pips back or shield layers back unless you use one of those green orbs that are layered throughout the level. And that's how you get them back. And I think we do have a couple of them. Are one, oh. I'm assuming there's something at the boss here, right? That you right, before, them, right before. Right before. before you come in. Yeah. Wow, well, we got our first kill. Okay. And you got the big loot. Uh, Explosion. Loot area. <laughs> so Taylor's trying out his new spells there. Ooh, he's walking into a lot here. Yeah, see, so he's got lightning going there. That's yep. effective against his range guys. Yep. Yeah, and the one thing that I didn't get a chance to do, lightning, uh, uh, Guyu, uh, Guyu, uh, Guyu. The lightning right now uh, is the one spell that hasn't had its uh, stats adjusted in terms of rage for the boss. So it's applying more rage to him than it should. We went and tweaked all the base CC spells, so with ice and gravity, you can actually use them a lot more and really get into a good cadence now. Uh, but lightning, we still have to roll the numbers back a little bit. We also made the change where uh, the spells don't cause rage on impact. It's just when they're disabling you or interrupting you. And mm -hmm. so it's more tied to the action that's happening as opposed to the spell hitting. That's good, yeah. So Camacho Sane is asking if there's any melee attacks or grapple with magic attacks. The one thing that we are not doing is there is nothing, we don't have any magic that simulates anything related to melee attacks or, or anything like that. However, there is magic in the game that allows you to manipulate enemies on the battlefield, definitely. Mm -hmm. and manipulate their position and, and things like that. But it's, we, we definitely want to preserve that, this feeling of you are using magic as your, as your raw, raw weapon. Um, for those of you that have, may have just joined us, um, this is our live stream here from Xavier of Lichdom. We're uh, doing a play test uh, 
This is how we get some feedback so that we know how to improve the game. I'm Michael McMain. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Xavient and the creative director. I'm Jim Weinhardt, the lead systems designer here at Xavient. So notice? we we still have not added a, a health bar to the boss, no, right? And yet. is that intentional? Are we still trying to test to see, or is it just we haven't gotten around? I think to it's it? just because we've been so bogged down and with the UI. Things, yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you notice the new lighting pass and change to that? Yeah. Yeah, it looks really it looks nice. Looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that. Tim was saying, yeah, it's going to happen. That's. I was just curious if uh, we were still trying to just see if people got a feel for it or how they like it. Because there's good, good and bad about it, right? I mean, yeah. um, the nice thing is you know you always know what you're dealing with, uh, but you do get a little bit more player attention when you're yeah. not 100% sure what his health is. So I'm wondering, Blaine is being very selective about when he uses ice. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering so if he, he's he picked up, know. yeah. He might know, it's possible, yeah. Um, Paragon is asking, uh, does the studio's name have a backstory? Um, so Xavier, the, the backstory is is maybe not quite as inter interesting as you might think, but it, it's it's unique, I guess I would say. Um, George Chapman is uh, my uh, CEO and my partner in, in the business here, and he, um, when we were formed the company, he was trying to come up with a name, and everything he checked was taken. They were all, uh, uh, every, every name he looked at was already taken from something else. And one day he was driving down the road and he saw a billboard that said Navient. <laughs> and he said, what would happen if I changed the N to an X? <laughs> and that's where it came from. So that's the backstory. And Andy's agreeing that the sky and light lighting look really awesome. So it does look like he's being a little selective. It'll be interesting in the debrief if yeah. he says whether or not um, it's... Uh, Ooh, nice freeze. Yeah, it was just in time. And then he's going back to fire. So that's... that's he might... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he knows, if he could tell that that's happening. Because that's, again, that's going to be a difficult thing him. for us to, to convey, right? God, that looks so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. All right, so let's see. Um, Rashad is asking, could you guys have the animations change based on the enemy's health or bloody... Yeah, we've, ex we've, we've uh, talked about things like that, things that we could do inside the game. The, the only thing that we're worried about is we don't want to iterate too much on things that might be really, really hard to pull off, and in the end, we just have to throw them away and put a health bar up yep. there. So we're, we're trying to find that right balance, and that's what these play tests are all about, too, is to try to have an understanding of what we can deal with there. And I think if there's one thing I've learned, especially in the past year working on this, uh, you, you just can't get over how important communication to the player is, and especially in a loot-based game where you're crafting these spells and we're almost making a promise to the player that you're, you know, you're building these things and they obey these rules, so the yes. world should react to those rules. Right. Uh, so I think just nailing feedback is paramount. Guido says, reminds me of God of War with all the orbs flowing out, sadness, sadness no one used grab. Yeah, uh, you're right. In this particular test, grab was pretty much yeah. untouched, right? Ooh. That's a lot of damage when you stand next to that. Yep. And saying the creature shield shielded head is designed to designed and built to fragment. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it's designed to build a fragment connected to the rage and 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 potentially his damage and his health. Um, and that might sell it again. Yeah. I mean, I love again. I never hate a health bar because mm -hmm. you know exactly where you're at. But and, and health bars create tension too, right? Yeah. When the when the health is really really low and you're really close and you're like, oh man, he's close and I'm close. So um, we can always resort to that if we have to. But the thing I did too is I brought his health down uh, a decent bit from the last play test. I felt like the even when they kind of nailed the cadence of bringing him down, it was lasting just a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. So shaved his health down just a little bit. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, those of you that are have play tested or um, are interested in play testing, uh, we encourage you to participate in the stream, participate in the chat because 
one of the things about this game is we are a very loot centric game, which means play testing is going to involve recursive, you know, like a continual ongoing. You're going to need, need to come back, pick up where you left off, so you can get deeper and deeper into the game in order to experience the true sort of overarching loot loop of the game. And if that's something that interest, interests you, what we're going to be pulling from the players that are interacting with us the most, so we can build that community. So. It's interesting to see now we can see that how many of them have built uh, spells at the rarity, the average rarity, and uh, yes, you can you're see right. that the loot distribution is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, Andy and them were talking about how the death mode um, happened when uh, he was oh, when in he blank, out of so blank, he got yeah. suspended for a second. <laughs> he got to live. 1.75 yeah. <laughs> seconds longer. Is that A? That's A. Yeah, lighting A. We. Yep. Yeah, see, that's good. Almost one shot. And rage him right now, see, now. what's interesting about lightning, lightning is a d difficult spell for us because on one hand, we love the way it feels, right? We love yeah. the delivery mechanic of it. It feels like lightning, right? A yep. bolt that strikes out from your hand and hits somebody. On the other hand, it's very, very powerful because lightning can't miss. Like, guys can't dodge it. They can't roll out of the way of it, right? Yeah. Because of the nature of it. And because of that, we've had a hard time balancing it to where it's become completely overpowered to completely useless, right? Yeah. It goes back and forth. Yeah. Um, but one thing I noticed is that we have the damage balanced right now for target, and it's balanced that way for AOE, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, no, I agree. We don't need the target-style damage on AOE, right, in yeah. or cone. Um, Camacho saying there's a, another comment here. In other, and what are the ways does a player interact with the world outside of core combat? So we are, it, we, the game has a story. Um, we have, our, our storytelling, though, is... It's a little bit different. We're not, you know, Skyrim style storytelling. It's very light. It's a, it's a very intriguing, very interesting story, but it's a very easy story to tell. Our focus is combat. I think what you could say is we're more like a Borderlands in that approach, um, where we are very, very combat centric. Um, it's all about combat getting loot, or more like a Diablo, mm -hmm. right? That you're killing guys, getting loot, making yourself better, going out and finding tougher guys. So it is a. a Primarily a combat uh, experience. So Guido's asking, is it just me or did you guys take away the one, two, three from his fireball? Shots no, we, rage? we've got a bug right now uh, where it actually seems to happen more when he's been recently interrupted or frozen, where uh, sometimes he loses the ability to cast. Ooh, good splat. See the smile right after he did it? Oh, yeah. So now we got some, now you got some gravity. Yeah. He's using the cone there. To, the cone gravity by default pushes people back, knocks them down. He's using some corruption too. Corruption's a, a challenging spell for people to use. Um, corruption is kind of the opposite of fire. It's not a dot. It's it, it has a small dot component to it, but that's just to tell you that the spell's on somebody. It's really a, a delayed direct damage. And um, and the way it works is when you stack a person up with corruption, they're they have, they're infected with little bugs that are growing, and if you kill them and and uh, if they die while the corruption's on them, and you can like hit them with a spell to cause it to cause it to burst everything that's in them to burst, and they take their burst of damage, and if that kills them, a certain percentage of those bugs, depending on how you've built the spell, come out and survive and fly around and and fly over and infect other other people. So. Um, but it's a, it's a challenging spell to get working, but when you do, it can be very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, they're, just, is, yeah they're nailing ooh, it now. <laughs> they, they pull in hard and fast. <laughs> it was actually uh, kind of a funny bug for why they were having trouble hitting you. Uh, you know, when he does his lash animation, he briefly looks to the side. Yes. So as he's winding up, he looks to the side. He was losing the player as a target during that time oh, because wow. he wasn't looking at you. So and he was kind miss. of thrown blind at that point. Oh, interesting. So it was an easy fix, but it was pretty funny. 
Yeah, so Andy's uh, talking about, uh, oh, Raise the Dead. So um, we, I'm not going to necessarily give away all of our spells. <laughs> We're only showing the spells that we have in here right now, but let me just say there's a bunch, There's there are more spells and more interesting ways to achieve spell effects that are not just related to um, having the raw spell. So yeah. I'm going to get, to give you a teaser what I'm talking about, um, it's very common in an RPG to, you know, go through the progress of the story and either gain levels or something, and at some point a trainer says, hey, how would you like to cast Meteor Shower? Well, we're not taking that approach. Our approach is that there are some fundamental cores to magic, and all of our cores are designed to be unique, so they're all very different, but because of that, there's not going to be very many. But the way you would execute something like a Meteor Shower is you would build a lightning, let's just say for the sake of, right, I'm making this up, I'm not saying this is necessarily going to be in the game, but you would build a lightning area effect spell in a certain way that it synergizes with a fire area of effect. And fire is constructed to be your finisher and lightning is constructed to be your opener. So you would throw down your lightning area of effect and hit somebody and you have to hit them with a critical effect, which you can force with your uh, forced crit. And then you can then you hit them with a critical fire, and when you do that, it causes a synergy to happen, which makes a meteor come out of the sky and strike the target. So that's how, so you would actually unlock that spell by building it and adding augments and seeing milestones and, and unlocking those synergies. And you'll see a lot more of that in the coming months as we implement uh, more of that system. Right now, we have experimented with some synergies, but uh, but we have a lot of that turned off in the uh, in the play test. We're uh, still still refining some of that. So uh, Shook is saying, yeah, the distractors are working good, and Andy, um, oh yeah, that's that's where he's talking about the corruption and gravity. Yeah, and that all goes back to feedback. So yeah, Head Cloud is asking about combo based, and definitely, it's definitely you as a player saying, I'm going to hit them with this to open them up to something, and then I'm going to finish them with this, and that causes a combined effect that yeah. um, you uh, that isn't inherently natural in those two spells, but when you put them together because of the way you built them, you get that third effect. And it's kind of a neat parallel to the system as a whole because you spend all this time crafting the spells and then you craft the spells together in the world to build something else. I love watching people kind of retool after they've had a tough time. Yeah. So that's a purple he had there in his shape, yep. right? What is that cone? It's a cone. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've seen a purple in the game yet. <laughs> he beat you to it. He did. Yes. I uh, like nimble purples. Blast. So one augment 30% casting oh, speed cow. and reduced charge time. Wait, on a blast? That's a uh, bug. Yeah, it's, that, the property's not and supposed to be there. And just kidding. <laughs> somewhere Ben just twitched. It's a tease. Yep. It's a purple, but one of the properties doesn't work. It is interesting to see how we, we say that, though, but it's possible that charging might come back to, yeah. to blast. We don't know that yet. Um, go ahead. It's interesting saying? to see how his third spell bank is like, I'm, I need these to kind of do my moment to moment gameplay, yeah. but the other two spell banks are, I know every once in a while I'm going to need a lot of fire and yeah. a lot of ice. And right. as a question. Will there be environmental damage bonuses, water plus electricity? Um, yes, we are again experimenting with, with some of that thing. I can't say that we'll have it as constrained or, or as, as built perfectly into the level as something like a Bioshock experience, but um, we definitely do want to have environmental impact of, of uh, different aspects of level, but we haven't implemented any of that yet. You know, watching, he just got another blue. Watching, come on, you really right away now get that uh, yeah. that feeling of yes. Yeah, I need to put this to use. And that actually even makes the loot flying to you. I mean, uh, one of the fun parts of picking up loot in a lot of these games is you kind of get that moment of ooh, what did I get? Yeah. But you really get that because as it pops up, you get the oh my god, I got a blue. What's it going to be? What's going to be? And then one aspect that we haven't done as far as you know that we're sort of. And uh, going into new territory with the balancing here is because we change the way the shield stuff works and we have those pips in there. 
right? We we've got a lot of work oh, yeah. to do to figure out yeah. the right right economy of balance for damage versus uh, restoration. So um, Taylor is making some use here of all of his different little things going on. So Andy's commenting about the fact that we have some water spell interaction. Um, yeah, we just say exactly where that. Like we want to have that stuff. We just don't exactly know how we want to do it yet. Um, head class uh, asking, will we be able to summon things at later levels, ex elementals, for example? Again, there are th there are spells in the game that we're not necessarily disclosing at this point. Um, the uh, but we definitely we definitely want you to feel powerful. <laughs> That's a part of feeling everything. Yes. excited we are too yep Definitely. every time we have a new weekly build I'm like or a new a new milestone I should say when we come to the play test it's exciting for me to play I haven't actually seen this since last week I've been out of town so and we got I didn't even get to play it yet in. I was telling Jim that I'm jealous because I was expecting to play it before the play <laughs> test was got to and I didn't get to are you able to accomplish what Josh was hoping to accomplish now okay uh -uh. Yeah, if you can do that. <laughs> so, Dr. Spock, um, we are not, this is not Skyrim. Thank you for that compliment. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're not necessarily even that type of game, but um, so, trust me, I love Skyrim, so we don't, we don't mind being compared to something like that. But we are definitely going for that... Uh, that same fantasy RPG feel. Oh, he fell into a bad area there. Or no, can he get out of there? Yeah, he can, yeah okay, yeah. okay, then he's okay then. Um, so I don't know. Have, oh, yeah, you know what? I haven't seen the, We put more of them in there, didn't we? Uh, yeah, Tim modified the encounter uh, yesterday. Okay. So you kind of missed your um, yep. thing there, didn't you? She's doing something with Taylor here for a second. Okay. Wait, Josh has, has Taylor moving into something here. I think we might be wrapping up. Okay, um, I see what he's doing. Oh no, he's he's got him up to here. Yeah. So he's actually this is at the boss, I think, right here, isn't it? Yep. Taylor is getting ready to fight the big guy. Yes, yeah, so he's got to recraft because I think when we popped him up to the boss, his spells got reset. Looks like, but it looks like he has the spells he had equipped though. That might be. So he kept his equip spells, but he lost everything that was in his inventory, is the idea, right? Yeah, I'm not okay. sure how that flow graph works right now. Yeah, now he's got gravity. Uh, we always talking about it. We, he's got gravity now, so. Yeah. Got some fire and some ice, and then he's got that one spell bank, I think, that has the other spells that he had crafted. Yeah. And now 
the boss is mad. Yep. He might not be pushed around. Yeah, Andy, we uh, we're want to see how Taylor uses his spells here, so we uh, activated uh, that. Let's see. I like the uh, singularity-ish yeah. very effect of the gravity. That's pretty cool. Um. Do we have you, you said that the, the when the boss strikes the ground when he's enraged, it, it leaves, leaves the, the sigil now, right? Yeah, it just doesn't persist and, as long as I'd like. And and does it when when we, we leave the trap, does that mean um that he uh like it, it, you hit it and it goes off one time? Yeah. Because I think we should maybe experiment with making like a persistent danger zone that's there as long as he's enraged, rather than a one time hit. Because usually the player gets hit by it. So yeah. it just goes away, so you can't tell the difference when it's in rage. But if it was like that glowing green, fiery, like just coming off the ground in that symbol. Yeah. Well, so it actually, so what what we ended up doing, there's the big sigil. If he enrages, we might be able to see it. He'll hit and you'll, he'll do the big sigil, but then there'll be a small version of the sigil there. Okay. But the problem is because he's he's a big force and he's kind of pushing you around, he's actually generally moving you away from where he set the trap. Sure. So one thing that might be interesting is uh, to put a much longer expiration on the traps so that you're slowly losing pieces of, of the arena yeah. that you're fighting it's on. It's getting smaller and yeah. smaller. Um, another thing that could be interesting too is if he threw them out there through the small sigils. Yeah. So it was a new enraged only yeah. attack that he throws out little traps and makes That's the not player a very small. We've, we've done some so, stuff and then like it that. can all still vanish when he enraged yeah. goes down. Yeah, Headclat, we appreciate the kudos there. That's, uh, <laughs> we don't we don't mind those at all. And See, the boss is going to walk in and out. There's oh, something about singularity around. where you oh, you want it to react larger than the AoE is, just because... Yeah, the, it seems like it should be much yeah. bigger. But again, that's where that can come into a technique. Yep, right? definitely. That's another thing we haven't really talked about. Yeah. It's not implemented yet, but we'll get into more on that in the future. <laughs> Keep tuning in. Yeah, if you want to see some more and hear more what we're talking about there. Yeah, see the way that symbol burns, like he could nail just even doing that and leaving it there. Yeah. And if it stayed for the entire duration of uh that would be pretty interesting. Alright, so let's see Headclat has a question here. Um what made you choose CryEngine over UE three or UE four? Um, you know, there were a number of things that went into it for us. Uh to be honest, a lot of it was serendipity in the sense that we were at a point where we made an engine decision, and that was at a point when CryEngine was, or Crytek was just starting to push uh, the licensing of its engine. We went out, talked to them, told them what we were trying to do, and it just all clicked, and, and we did it. So it wasn't really us saying we like one over the other. It was just sort of a serendipitous uh, opportunity. And for us, we liked the idea, too, of making an RPG that had a CryEngine look, yeah. right? It was an opportunity for us to do something that kind of is unique in that sense. Yeah, um, yeah look, I mean, <laughs> look around. Yeah, it looks very, very different than, than a lot of a lot of other games, so that's that's kind of what, what went into that. Um, number name, uh, the spellcrafting seems to have much potential. Yeah, we have a lot of plans to get very deep yep. with that. You're This is barely scratching the surface here. Um, Unity 3D wasn't really something we looked at at the time. I mean, we made this decision a couple of years ago, and uh, um, it just CryEngine was a, a good fit for us, and, and Crytek has been a great partner for us. Yep. We've been very, very happy with them, and and uh, it's been great. All right, Rashad, time to head home. We appreciate you tuning in with us. We always love our, uh, our, our buddies from the other studios here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, Shook is saying that the, uh, you know, as as a senior level designer, he likes using the Crytek, great, right? because the the engine is is it's 
really, really great. It's got some great tools and stuff building it. It is. It's, yeah. We're really, really happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, and for a level designer, the editor is just a treat. So I had Clot um, was asking the question, what is it like to make a game? Um, it's like uh, banging your head against the <laughs> cement wall, but really, really fun yep. at the same time. No, it's it's. I'll tell you for myself, from my own perspective, it's one of the most rewarding things um, that you know. Just being an avid game player, I really love it. And it's nice to you know sort of have a vision and see it come to fruition yeah. and collaborate with everybody. I love to do that. So that experience has been very, very, very interesting for me. Um, it's uh, it's but it's very, very challenging as well, right? There's a yeah. lot of things that you take for granted, and uh, we've been very fortunate to get some really, really good people here that. Uh, that have helped us put this together. Um, and the funny thing is these play tests, with us streaming these now, that this reinforces what I love about making games. Because if you watched last week's stream, you saw a, this game, but it, a lot of things were different. And you saw the things that we were talking about learning, and one week later, you see that iteration, and it's, it's just so neat to see it slowly come together over yes, time. And right. Yeah, so uh, Rice, we appreciate that uh, sentiment there. We're, we're going to keep doing these streams. So we, we have a, uh, our big announcement is going to come in a couple of weeks, and uh, where we're doing the release date and the, um, uh, you know, re releasing more details about the game. And then um, we're going to continue to do some of these streams every time we do a play test. I don't think we'll do them quite as frequently right yeah. after the, uh, the event, but... Uh, Every time we do one, we will broadcast it and stream it. And Headclot's using the free uh, SDK, the Cry SDK. So has that been working out well for you? Shown this? No, we have not shown this to any. We haven't actually officially announced the game yet. I mean, <laughs> it might seem weird that we're like streaming this live to a you know a huge audience of like. 60 people but <laughs> but um, we haven't officially announced the game we've only talked about it um, and uh, but that of official announcement comes in a couple of weeks and at that point we will be much more much more proactive in talking to the press so far we've been sort of if you know what it is you're you're in, in on the secret is kind of how we how we manage it now Going on so they're done, I think, right? And um, actually, some of them started playing. Yeah, I think because they're, they're gonna yeah. and, and uh, they probably have already finished their yeah their 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 surveys and and so Taylor is gonna do something. his. So um, Taylor will be finishing his survey, and then what's gonna happen from here is you're gonna see uh, Josh Van Veld, our producer, is gonna bring the play testers in here. Uh, we're going to activate the camera. If it's not already activated, are you on? No, I'm not. Yeah, we'll yeah. activate it. So we'll activate the camera, and you're going to see the play tester sitting in here, and we're and you're going to see Josh going through the Q and A, where he's sort of debriefing them. If you want to hang around for that, we, you know, that's great. Um, I'm going to be switching over. Jim and I will be going into another room, and we'll be on chat with you, yep. so we can continue to ask answer questions if you have questions, either as it relates to what you've seen or relates to what comes up from the players um, as they're being debriefed. Um, and um, and then we'll uh, shut it down after that. So thank you very much for those of you who attended and have to leave. Um, uh, those of you that stay with us, you know, we'd love to keep chatting with you in chat. And uh, and we thank you for being a part of this playtest with us. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Claude. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so it'll probably still be a couple minutes before they get in yeah. here. So let's just kind of recap. You know, we, we eliminated the enrage text on the boss, so it's going to be interesting to see if the play testers could tell that he was becoming enraged, right? Yeah. And if they made that linkage between, I used a spell that disables him, right? Like mm -hmm. a frost or a lightning that interrupts him, and I made him enrage. Yeah. Or if they just thought, well, I hit him a bunch and he got mad, because that's kind of what players felt before. And that's going to be a tough thing for us to, to get over. Um, and I could, I could see it still that. happening, because watching, yeah. it, watching it here, I think that we're, I think we're onto something by flaring up the VFX, but the problem is we also kind of do that. One of his taunts causes him to glow really quick, mm -hmm. which is sending, like now he just randomly glowed green it's for a, a second. It's a signal yeah. Almost, yeah. And then when he casts his ranged spell, because with his silhouette and him leaning over, uh, depending on what angle you're at, it can seem like his whole back has erupted 
in the green flames again when it's really his projectile. So I think we do have to do some color coordination to where they're not, it's not well, all green. There's something else I think that we could do too. And I think that we could actually give him a voice, right? This, yeah. this is a Frankensteinish monster, right? It's mm -hmm. something that's been put together from pieces of things. So if we gave him a voice, his his voice could tell you. Yeah. See, like when you freeze him, he can be saying, no, yeah. no, you know, getting really angry in his voice. And then when uh, you're damaging him, you know, he can be saying something different. But we can, we, so we don't have to rely purely, because I, I think there's going to be a limit as to what we oh, can yeah. do on the guy, right? And, yeah, and it's that. all stacking it up. Yeah. Now, Trick is saying, you will dig everything. That's yeah. the, the spin on the Xavier, you will feel everything. The webcam wouldn't help. Uh, because it's pointed at the yeah we chairs. have it, we have it lined up perfectly for the chair yeah so, so you would you would see the corner of my chair and and Jim and I would have to hug so we could yeah. be on the camera together and I'm pretty confident that's not in Jim's contract <laughs> well we can negotiate <laughs> <laughs> all right this should be coming in here in just a minute yep. yeah, I think Josh is just talking over it now. Okay, we're going to switch it over. All right. Well, again, thank you very much. Uh, Jim and I will be on chat. We're going to walk over to the yep. room there, I believe, where Misty's hanging out, right? Is that where we're yep. going? And then uh, we can chat some more in there. Thanks again, guys. Yeah, thank you. So, thanks again for uh, for coming out. We really appreciate it. Um, sure. Obviously, this is super helpful for us in terms of, you know, we uh, can't really see the forest for the trees a lot of times because we're playing this thing so much. Although there were features in there that I saw for the first time because you know we're <laughs> making stuff happen so fast. I was like, oh man, I didn't even know that was in there, which is pretty cool for me. But um, so yeah, they, like guarantee we saw some really important stuff already that that you guys found for us so it's it's been a win uh for us already just in terms of observing but of course we want to hear about what your impressions were and and uh kind of see what you were feeling about the experience um as you were going through it so i think the the only real preamble that i want to give other than you know being appreciative to you guys for for coming out and volunteering some time for us is to say that I definitely don't want you guys to give me the answers that you think I want to hear. I want to give. I want to hear the answers that, that you feel as players who you know maybe have some critiques about the game, right? So uh, if there's something that that you didn't like or you didn't feel was quite right or, or didn't meet your expectations or whatever, that's the kind of stuff that we want to hear. If you have good stuff to say, that's cool too. But you know, uh, that's not what I'm I'm fishing for here. So i uh, got a few different things to, to run through, and I'll probably just kind of go down the line and give each of you guys a, a chance to give an answer. Um, but you know, if you think of something after the fact, go ahead and, and jump in and, and say what you have to say. Um, so one of the things that, that we're doing this demo that we're working on is going to be uh, kind of the, the first real introduction to the public of, of the game, and so we want to get it dialed in. But, you know, stepping back from the minutia of the demo, 
we're we're thinking about you know what is this game right like what's its identity and I think we're we're discovering that by building it um, but it's kind of like we know a lot of of context about the design and what we have planned so we want to know what experience you felt like you were having what what kind of game are we building based on that that slice that you guys saw so David do you want to kind of give me your impression like what would you say to somebody who hasn't seen this hasn't played it what kind of game did you come here to play test tonight what kind of game did I come to play test, or what kind of game what did I, I play kind test? Of game did you play okay. Test? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it was uh, a magic combat uh, game, uh, combat slash uh, magic crafting, um, sort of a, a, a mage combat simulator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mage. <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good phrase. Let me write that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Blaine. Yes, I'd say uh, it's like Magicka meets Skyrim. That's, <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, the, the world definitely had a Skyrim feel to it. I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. I partially want to say Wizard God pones everybody. <laughs> that's what I felt like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wizard God pones everybody. <laughs> and so they felt half that way. Uh, what's that like? Causing all the stuff to happen. <laughs> yeah, the, the lack yeah. of stamina bar, really. It was just like, oh, I could just keep spamming this ultra powerful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the casting time. I felt, it did feel a little bit bad for the guys running up. <laughs> and, uh, they had it was no fun. idea. Yeah. <laughs> That, oh man, it's like one-upsmanship. <laughs> Taylor, what, what would you say? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, all that is sounds about right. I feel like the it's definitely the best battle magic kind of simulator I've, I've felt. It's, it's uh, the ability to like, jump around, you know, is, is very... kind of reminds me of like Heroes of Might and Magic, like that uh, Dark Messiah game. Mm -hmm. um, got that kind of vibe, just being able, being nimble and being like able to throw off spells, like you know, really quickly gives that kind of battle magic thing going. Cool. So, um, th and that makes me think of a question, but I want to actually go back. You know, all you guys probably checked out the website. That's how you found out about the um, the playtest in the first place. Uh, so you probably know a little bit about the game based on reading, you know, the stuff that's been out there before. What were you expecting coming in? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I, not much at all. I mean, I, I was expecting, like, a at least partial story or, or anything like that, um, or, or anything. Uh, I'd say I don't really have much in the way of expectations. I've, I've done a couple tests before, and they can be anything from you know, here's your menu to play this end game scenario. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a bit weird for me because I've actually um, I did some work for one of the offices right down the hall from here. Oh, really? And so when I first saw this place, I was like, oh, I gotta check them out. And this was like two, a year and a half or so ago. So okay. I, was, I was kind of, feel like I, I, a bit knew, I knew a bit more of what to expect because I'd seen the videos, read the blogs and everything. Gotcha, so. okay. So did the, the actual play experience kind of line up with what you had mm -hmm. seen previously? Yeah. Okay. Qual, what was your expectation? Um, actually, I wasn't expecting always the placement art. Uh, was it because I came out by here with um, Scat's group? Uh, was okay. So I uh, was at a time, he shows a couple of uh, was it bits of it, and we saw it. So that's some uh, was it standby art pieces. Not how to say that, but um, when I saw it, I was like, wow, this just blows me. <laughs> it, visually speaking? Yeah, visually speaking. Like, I okay. always have expecting something that was um, like more gameplay oriented, like uh, yeah. not so much focused on like the immersiveness of the I uh, was in environment but then then it was like whoa <laughs> right <laughs> right on yeah I, I agree it's I've uh, I've never play set, play tested before but I didn't realize it was going to be as polished as it was it's okay just, I mean it looks very good already and um, and you know gameplay is pretty pretty smooth in general it all the, the skeleton's definitely there you know coming right around. on so you mentioned uh, answering the original question, nimbleness, right? And um, 
really the the big mechanic I think that, that adds that factor is the blink mechanic mm-hmm. and that's something that we're always curious about you know people's reactions to so maybe let's start with you and, and go yeah, back sure. down the line like was was blink something I want to know about how how you learned it and how it felt and then how did you feel about having that on your space bar as opposed to a jump right mm-hmm. um, so I mean it on the space bar I don't know about I just I I, always, I feel like jump is so ingrained in everything, you know? Sure. Um, but I liked it as a mechanic. It felt really cool. Um, and then definitely, since you don't really have, a, like, a block or a, any sort of defense, you know, it's, it definitely makes sense as, like, a mage defense. Um, it did feel a little bit weird sometimes, like, when you try to do it too quickly after doing it the time before, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it felt like there should be a, a little, like, you know, Some recharge. Kind of- some way to let you know when it has recharged exactly. or that it's not recharged yeah, yet, exactly. other than just nothing happens when you mm-hmm. try to use it. Um, but I bet I like the mechanic itself, I like a lot. Okay. Qua, what was your take on Blink? Uh, first time I hit the space bar, I was half expecting to jump, and then I just shot <laughs> off to the side. Uh huh. Um, that was before I realized that you could hold down the direction and it will tell you to uh, whichever direction you're moving in. Right. Um, but after that, it became my best friend just, okay. to, just to get away from the enemies that were closing in. Sure. Um, the biggest issue I had with it, like with using it, was I didn't, I couldn't see behind me. Like if I was trying to move away from an enemy to dodge, most of the time I would move back just so I could keep him in my line of fire. Uh, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a movie to the side, which I should do more often actually. But <laughs> it was a, because I could see what's behind me, I'm trying to blink and. I see a slight blur, but nothing's happening, so I'm okay. hitting something. <laughs> Just show of hands, like, anybody feel like they were getting attacked out of nowhere? Where Was there suddenly somebody just, like, right behind you, right beside you, and you had no sense that they were there? So uh, that did happen to you? Once. Okay. Once. So not too much, but, you know, what, what like, how frequent was that in your experience playing? Uh, the f- first time was in the, the area with the, the undead things, I don't know what they were called, but they had green glowing stuff. You just call them undead things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess because like I killed them, and then I went running into the cave, and then I guess they came back. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, that was the first time that happened. All right, so let, let's get back on track with the, the blink set. Was your answer uh, you finished, Qua? Okay. So what was your take on blink? Uh, I... It was cool. I really liked it. Um, I just I know on some of the maps I found myself like losing track of myself. I guess so. Like I ne- I would end up like next to a wall and not really realize that there was a wall there or like, something behind me. So I would keep trying to blink, but then I'd get hit because I didn't know it was there. Gotcha. Okay. But as a mechanic, it was really nice. David. Uh, it was, uh, to agree with the group, it was definitely a par- paradigm shift. Uh, the first time I you know came upon a, a waist high ledge I'm like alright I'm going to jump up on this and I blurred a little bit um, but it wasn't too hard to figure it after that and I like that it was kind of a thematic style um, a lot of games you'll find that they'll have a jump mechanic that's completely useless it's not meant to be used anywhere mm-hmm. uh, and I've always kind of liked the games that just dis- like uh, the, the Ocarina of Time style that we're not even going to include a jump button because you're not meant to use it that's just a sort of an explicit method of the designer saying, don't bother trying to jump on stuff. We're not going to even try to fool you with it. Um, and I mean, I, I even one of the things I liked the most was the lack of any UI elements. Very quickly you realize that in the game, you figured out where the placement of stuff was going to be. Mm. Um, in the game, you know, it was, I started timing the, the blur. It was about a three-second delay. So I even started adding that in to, to space people out a little bit with Frost so I could make sure... By the time the other guy got to me, I had a blur left uh, to go. Um, I would agree that I think a little bit of, of collision skipping needs to be added to where if you blur back into something, maybe it shifts you to the side a little bit. Mm. Um, so you still get something yeah, out of your... Yeah, some kind of feedback, because it seems yeah. like so much in the game is designed to give you that feedback intuitively without using an UI element or, or something that flashes in the screen that says, D- dude's hitting you over here. Um, 
that's interesting. Yeah, it's like a collision heads up or something when going back. Yeah, yeah, it skips to the side or something like that. I mean, of course, you know, you got to worry about skipping right the heck off the map. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's. It, it, I'd, I'd love to see it continue in the vein of, of staying in, in, in immersive without adding non-game elements to, to give you indication of things. Okay, but definitely, you, and I think it's a common theme, blinking backwards can be kind of confusing in terms of you run into something um, you didn't know that you were... Pretty quickly I found that you just don't blink backwards. Strafing is the best, the best <laughs> thing to do. Fair um, enough. Which I, I really agree with that. Mm-hmm. Mostly just from like a combat uh, is a perspective, like if you're facing enemy, you never want to backpedal, like just yeah. to straight back. Always <laughs> to the side. What you're talking about? Yeah, I'm like turning around and running when I like, yeah. you know, as opposed yeah. to looking backwards. Off. And I did. I also found, you know, go forward, let the enemy spawn, back up into a cave a little bit so they can't strafe you, and then so you can control the environment a little bit. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna kind of save some of the magic stuff for a little bit later. Let's talk about the AI, right? Like the the bad guys that you were fighting. Um, what was the the most challenging part? And let's leave the, the boss out of the equation for the moment. We'll talk about him separately. Do you, does anybody stand out as memorable to you as being tough? The, the there were three uh, I guess female uh, AI bits. They were they had shields. Uh, they were using magic. It seemed like each one of them had a different immunity. Hmm. So it just took a second. I was like, all right, I'm going to use an AOE. Okay, that one's actually taking damage. Let me focus on her for a second. Um, one of them took damage with a different color, and I couldn't figure out if that meant she was healing from it or not, but I just switched to a different type, and I was able to burn her down. Um, those were the biggest part, and especially during when they showed up. There was a group of people, then they showed up, and then green guys showed up after them. Yeah. Um, so that uh, at that point, I had uh, one bar of health left so um, barring the boss that was the hardest part okay uh, yeah I think that was uh, except mine didn't have a, a different immunity thing it was all just they had the shield and then when the shield went down I just spammed ice <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was your plan uh, yeah. were you able to <laughs> actively take their shield down or were you just waiting for the shield to go down and then I couldn't take the shield down at all at least okay. not to my knowledge Okay. Um, I did mostly the, the AOE one with it, so if it went down, I wasn't intentional. Okay. And of course, that was the last, basically, encounter right before the boss, so I would expect that our intention was to make that the toughest, so if so, that was a success. I, either that or the, like I mentioned before, with the cave, when I wasn't expecting the army to appear behind me again, because that right. was, that was okay. just the unexpectedness of that. Yeah, we'll have to look at the, the tape on that. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but uh, that's interesting. I surprisingly enough didn't use AOE spell. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't use the spray or the uh, air effect. I just used the target and the uh, was it rapid target especially. Mm -hmm. Um, So while their shields were up, I uh, was uh, just started casting at every other guy in the area and when their shield went down, because it felt like it was time, because I noticed it says absorbed and I didn't feel like the spells were doing anything, I just waited until they ran around and dropped their shield. Okay. And then when that happened, it's like, eat some lightning. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. I'll have to file that away, the targeted only approach. Taylor, what was your standout moment, uh, difficulty wise? Uh, I mean, I don't know, I was, I was kind of ha- trying to do like a, like a logarithmic, like see, you know, what affects each person, you know, differently. Um, so I had a couple death times where I had to go back and backtrack. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, it was all, it was all pretty medium tough until until the boss. I'd, I'd say. Yeah. I would agree with that description. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tough. And, and we can talk about that right now because I'm curious. You know, so eventually the game's going to have multiple difficulty levels that you'll be able to select. Um, let's assume that we're going to have easy, normal, and hard, right? Uh, what did you think you were playing in that in that version tonight? Uh, I mean, I would say somewhere between normal and hard. Okay. Because it, it could definitely be harder. I, I mean, I think just my play style, I like to play through things multiple times just for sure. fun and to, to try different ways to do it. Um, 
Yeah, I would say I would say somewhere between medium and hard. Okay. I was going the opposite direction. I thought it was somewhat easy to always it medium, because um, again, moral like wizard god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I this is how I was feeling. The I was in most of the game, even when the I was it that last giant wave of like barrier caster and green ghosts came up. I uh, was it I still felt uh, was that I was in relative control of the situations like yeah you're you're dangerous and your barriers and your ghosts but hey I have <laughs> like <your> magic <laughs> <laughs> right on yeah um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I I'd say the the game was easy to medium simply because like you said you can just keep casting until the boss and then I would say medium to hard <laughs> okay. so, I feel like there was a very relatively large difficulty jump between the two, um, and especially going back to the second time because I knew all the controls and everything. Right. It was like one hundred percent easier. I didn't have to figure anything out. I knew exactly what I was doing. Gotcha. So a lot of the the difficulty early on was just ramping up, basically, yeah. like figuring out how to play. Okay. David. It's a normal. Yeah. Pretty pretty. Uh, very engineered feeling to the difficulty curve. On a normal playthrough, if I don't, you know, if I'm, I'm clowning the bosses, I'm, I mean, that's that's pretty much a definition of easy, so. Okay, so, um, yeah, let's talk about the boss a little bit. Um, he has a, a mechanic that we're kind of working on the communication for and stuff, um, and so I'd like to hear, and this can be more of just a, a group discussion because um, I think everybody's answers are going to inform everybody else a little bit, but I kind of want to know from you guys, like, how is he designed? How are you supposed to beat him? What are you supposed to do? What are you not supposed to do from from what you learned while playing him? Just jump in when you got something. Well, it seemed like, I mean, the go-to move, at least for me, was frost people, slow them down, start working over them. It seemed like he, he got immune to frost pretty quickly. I got him once. And then he just didn't slow down after that. I don't know anybody else noticed that. I didn't know that. I kept freezing him the whole yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I, tried to just, I was just gravity hit, ice hit, and then fire hit. Try to just keep repeating that so like he would you know keep him at least a little bit far away. Yeah, I think the same thing. The, the core tactic was stay the hell away from yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. Because when he punched, he had, had something where he hit the ground, did damage around him. Punched you, did tons of damage. Um, he had one green spell that he used a lot. I noticed that when he was, when he was on fire, like the green fire, mm -hmm. uh, was it? That was the only time I could freeze him. So okay. when ever the fire started dissipating, I just swapped uh, my strongest free spell, and he just stood there while I jolted him. Um, and yeah, that's definitely the most dangerous thing was him closing in and then punching. Which <laughs> on that part, you yeah. should just pu wait until he's right next to you. Mm -hmm then blink, otherwise he'll just continue his charge to you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's one thing I noticed. If you got, if you blinked a little too early, he just turned and kept yeah. right on at you and you couldn't blink again. And I, I found if you did the um, the area to freeze where it was like right in front of you, even if he was rushing at you, it just froze him and then you could slowly walk away while hitting him with fire. <laughs> so, <Nice. laughs> so interestingly enough, um, you, Qua, are closest in terms of, I think, like deciphering what, what he's doing, but Blaine actually came up with a method that I think was really like what I would use, but sort of accidentally. So what you were doing was basically pelting him with fire, and then if you would happen to get close, you'd use freeze at that point, and you'd be able to stop him. Now, if you freeze him too much or use any kind of crowd control on him too much, he goes into enrage mode. That's when the green fire is on him. At that point, he attacks you much more aggressively and tries to get in your face a lot faster. So what we're trying to figure out is a way to help you guys to understand that without sort of beating you over the head with it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're still kind of working on that. So if you guys have thoughts about like you know since you're fresh off of trying it for the first time about like any hints that would have helped you without like putting a hint on the screen do you have ideas about that the the green flame at least when i played it seemed like a normal part of this progression yeah. okay um, there almost seems like there needs to be an animation for him throwing off the effect or shrugging it off or some sort of communication of he's he's resisting this effect okay um 
but at least to me it wasn't really clear that he was responding to something that I was doing. So right. when when you would use a spell that had a crowd control element to it, you didn't you didn't know that he was completely ignoring it, like I, or that he was immune to it at that point. Like I said, I, it seemed like he was becoming immune to it, so I just tr changed to different tactics. After that, I didn't try it again. Okay. It was like all right, heavy damage and just spam and get the hell out of his way. <laughs> Yeah, maybe like the camera cut to him when the flame erupts or something like that to kind of give first you the first time idea. they emphasize right. that. Right. Give you an idea of what's actually going on. I kind of liked how uh, was that he just becomes rage. I noticed the green flame because I was like, you didn't have that before. Okay. Why do you have it now? And I was thinking maybe it was part of like the progression. Like maybe I got him low on health, like some bosses might <laughs> like do that. Uh, was that? And then the flames disappeared. And I was like, why did your flame disappear? <laughs> that, like, is your enrage mode over? Can I throw more ice at you now? <laughs> um, so I kind of like that because, like, I felt I was learning his patterns. Yeah. So it felt more rewarding when I was like, okay, okay, so you, so, so you're immune to it some of the time. So now I just got to find a way to keep you from being immune to it all of the time. Right. Interesting. Well, it was a lot of fun to watch you guys <laughs> fight him, for sure. Um... So, and, and just general thoughts on the boss, like, you know, so let's pretend he's the first boss in the game, right? Like, as, as somebody who spent some money to buy this game, potentially, you know, how was that as far as an experience goes? Was it satisfying? Was it cool? Um, did it meet, you know, your expectations for a boss in a game like this? Uh, for me, I guess, I think fighting the minions was a little more satisfying. Uh, also, uh, my... Uh, spells were a little wacky. Like, yeah, you ended said, up like, in God mode with terrible spells. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> you did not get maybe really the, long the boss best fight. And put, Taylor like <laughs> spent a great deal of time like immaculately crafting like really interesting that spells. That was my favorite part. And then <laughs> because we we needed to you know hurry through for time, I teleported him there, and then gave him this stock set of kind of crappy spells. Uh, and so he was, he spent a lot of time. Yeah, it was a, it was a long boss fight. <laughs> All right, so you know we'll take your your response with the grain of salt. Um, I actually really like the lead up to that because throughout the first part of like minions, like you you get to this pattern of freeze, then unleash whatever you want on them, and then when you finally get to this boss, it's he's like, nope, not letting you do that. And so <laughs> all of a sudden, you feel like it doesn't feel repetitive because it, otherwise, I, I I walked to the thinking, okay, you're a slightly bigger minion, maybe a boss, but there's only one of you, so freeze, the works, and he doesn't let you do that. And suddenly you had to come with a new strategy, which I thought was really fresh because it was like, all right, so now I gotta quickly do something before he kills me. Okay. Um, I mean, the the only real, I guess, issue I had with the boss, I just felt like he was a damage sponge, and that was, mm, that was okay. pretty much what he did. Um, I, I, I didn't notice any of the immunity stuff because the only time I froze was when he got. Like, yeah, your right timing was like perfect <laughs> because his enrage will dissipate over time, right? And it, uh, we were like, he must have figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so you felt like it, it just took a long time to, to take him down. Like you yeah. had a strategy that worked, but it, it just lasted a while. Even if he had some kind of, I don't, I don't want to say quick time elements because I know those are bad but <laughs> but like something like if you just like walked up to him while he's like on the ground and just kicked him I don't know something <laughs> just something that to add to it other than just pelt you with fire and then you know that's it and Actually. maybe just an indication that he's getting worn down you know because at some like point a health I, meter maybe yeah kind of or, or something like that yeah. you know because at some point I, I was like trying to set the drapes on fire and stuff I'm like I don't know if this <laughs> yeah is I saw at that point I was like man somebody's <laughs> bored with this boss <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just trying to see if there was like some like uh, yeah, I'm like, gonna trigger the avalanche yeah, okay. yeah exactly yeah. That, that's what I was Fair wondering enough. at, at <laughs> some point and um, the main reason I actually thought about that was because uh, my brother had just started playing God of War, and I know when I first started playing it, I missed all of the visual cues the first time with the bosses. So then I was thinking, okay, where is it? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so. um, it w I mean, it was very clear that it, it was a boss fight, at least to me. Um, uh, leading up to that, the, the game very much used color to indicate differentiation between enemies, uh, you know, the green enemies, uh, purple shields, and things like that. But all of the sprites at that point had been humanoid. Mm -hmm. So we walk in and there's sort of a rhino beast, and it, it's sort of a clear communication, this is a different enemy, you should treat it differently. And it's the only enemy that got a cutscene, right. uh, where the control was taken away from the player. Um, which was slightly frustrating, because I, I got in the habit of, okay, either the music's changed, 
where there's a health box. Start charging a spell. <laughs> um, and when the cutscene came, it took my charge away from me. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, the, the difficulty wasn't bad. Um, I, I noticed he got staggered twice, and that was nice to see sort of feedback. And, and I, was, I was like, all right, I got to a second stagger, and then I got, uh, you know... Five billion spells. The point like, where he was kind of like down on yeah, all fours. Yeah. Okay. And that was clear to you what what that he was like, you know, in a state where you're supposed to just wail on him. Uh, I took that more as an indication of his health bar. I was like, all right, okay. he's staggered. He's either quarter or half or something like that. Gotcha. Uh, and I half expected him to start hitting a lot harder at that point. He might have. I may just may have just missed it. But you know, I expect him to go into you know, this is my final form sort of thing. Um, but I agree, either maybe a diff texture difference in him right. uh, or, a, or a color gradient to say that how much damage you're doing to him or some feedback to say this, this method you're doing is very effective based off of his texture or color or behavior even. Um, but uh, yeah, I completely missed his, his rage thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, spend the rest of the time. We got about ten or fifteen minutes, and just talk about uh, magic in this game, right? So I think the um, the best thing to do maybe is you know obviously you guys all figured out the crafting system. You guys all built spells. We were really happy about that. If you had come in three weeks ago, even the the menu for that was extremely different uh, and not quite as intuitive. And even I mean, you know, just hours before this test, a bunch of stuff went in. So we're we're pretty happy. Uh, with how we observed you guys using it, and we'll analyze the footage from that to see if there's any stuff where, oh, you know, it wasn't totally obvious doing this or that. So um, if there's anything glaring about usability that you noticed that you didn't write in the questionnaire, go ahead and bring it up. But I think the, um, the information I'd like to try to get out of each of you guys is, you know, just like, what were the moments that felt really interesting to you? And ultimately, what spells did you pick as like, these are my go-to spells, and why was that? Um, so let's start with you, Dave. Um, the the good part, uh, I mean, the, the really the, the badass parts was AOE lightning. I mean, that okay. was uh, that's that's where it started. Wizard and or, or mage god kicked in because I was like, all right, fire! I got my card control eyes, and I can you know throw lightning at a group of people. This is badass. Um, <laughs> Then, uh, I mean, uh, the, the gravity parts, actually my second playthrough, I built all three styles of gravity and that was fantastic. I mean, any sort of, uh, you know, physics manipulation of the world is, is brilliant. Um, the crafting was nice. I, I kind of, part of me wanted to, you know, spread everything out in front of me and kind of look at all my options and I had to scroll through a long list to okay. get to each different kind, um, and that's probably... So you wanted to see basically like an inventory screen that was just all your stuff, so you could um, kind of get a picture of what was there? Maybe, or the three different kinds of, of tiles separated out, or, okay. you know... Um, like into tabs or something? I don't even need tabs. I do like having things on a screen so I can yeah. I can very quickly, uh, ta you know, move between them and see kind of the different stats as I add up on the right. Okay. Um, but, you know, maybe three different piles of you know magic type and then modifier so as you gathered more mm -hmm. stuff the fact that it sort of everything was in a scrolling mm -hmm. list and the items in the list are fairly thick right yeah. it was just hard to get a sense of like could, i guess was your intention that you wanted to sort of plan your spell in advance by looking at all your stuff and then it was hard to do that, or I just want to know what, what um, you couldn't do that you wanted to. It, it a little bit of the planning spell, and I just scrolling back and forth to resee things, and I'd also noticed that that a lot of the the, the effects didn't stack. Like I, I had several of the plus one all effects. I was like, well, those should just stack. I should have just this times three. I don't okay. Know, I don't need extra space to see those out of order, um, or something like that, to sure. where I could just you know. And I'm sure it's just a play style thing where I'm going to spread all my toys out of the toy box around me and see everything before I select which one I want to go to. Okay, no, that, that's great feedback. I love that. Awesome. So, Blaine, what's your, uh, uh, um, your go-to magic spell? Uh, go-to ice. Ice anything. <laughs> was, yeah, I became a big fan of the ice. But um, to kind of elaborate on what he was saying, is that mm -hmm. um, when I was crafting the spells, um, like if you were... I, I went through, when I got a new spell, I would make three spells of that type. And um, you and in order to do that, you've got to scroll all the way back up to the top, go back through the list, and then go all the way back up to the top. And then it got kind of, I guess, annoying because 
if I had one of the tiles I knew I was going to use, I couldn't just put it over there. I had to go back up to the top and then start it over. Interesting. Okay. And um, and so I, I feel like even if it was you know tiled out and the different kinds, and then that would help with that. But also having some kind of like description, like if you hover over it, I know it gives you the stats of what it does, but some kind of description is like, this is how it works. Right, that, that's an interesting point. So basically, like, the, there's nothing in the, the crafting menu or the equipping menu that tells you this is how to use this spell or this is how it's going to behave. Right. Okay. And then to, to go back to what you were saying earlier, um, basically, you want to minimize, like, if you already have in your head what you want to build, you want to minimize the number of actions you need to take before that thing is just in your inventory equipped ready to use. Right. Okay. Would you, like, to, to your point... When you craft a spell, do you want all the tiles to stay there so you only have to swap out one to make a new spell? No, 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 not with that. It was just that when, when you make the new spell, it brings you back to the, the craft a new spell from scratch. Okay. And if you're at the bottom, it doesn't like reset the scrolling thing. It keeps that down. Oh, the just bottom. going to the top of the, the list. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I know that I, that would help, but I, ideally, I would like to have them. Separated just be able to see more of your stuff at one time, have more things to yeah. pull. Okay. And you may see something you didn't realize you had, you know, if it's that way. Interesting. Okay, that's good. What do you guys do? Like, which one did you use? Did you use AoE spells? Uh, I use the the rapid target ice and then the AoE ice the most. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to see what everyone's preference was. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. um, I, I would like to see um, the. Like, instead of just one giant scroll list, like three scroll lists, since there were three uh, different options, because I didn't understand that at first, but I was trying to build, okay, let's put ice, and I was I was uh, trying to find curse in order to add that to the element. I was like, uh, where is curse? Oh, these, the, the words on there means I can't use anything else other than these three types. Right. Um, which I didn't understand because it was at the top and then I had to scroll down and then when I scrolled down I couldn't find it. So I thought, did I okay. use it up already? <laughs> yeah, I hear exactly what you're saying. Uh, so I do that having them several out of three, like when you click on one, like in the third list, like they disappear so that you couldn't see them. Uh, is that, okay, so I know I can only use these um, to make them. Mm -hmm. um, a part of me wars against, uh, what is it? Liking the fact that I have to test out the spell to see if it works, uh, like it works how I think it should work. Okay. Um, now the down part of me says no. I kind of want to know what it is before I waste was the resources. resources building yeah. it. Um, but it seemed like resources wasn't too big of an issue since you were getting runes left and right. So uh, was it that was partially okay with that. It was fun. I was it throwing spells around, seeing what they actually did. Okay, that's interesting. So you felt like the, the loot was kind of thick enough on the ground that you didn't mind potentially wasting some of it by creating a spell that you ended up not using? Yeah. Okay. Um, mostly I was uh, use like the plus ones, plus twos for mm -hmm. those. Okay. Uh, we got a few plus fives and I saved those up for uh, was it any spell that I really, really wanted, like the lightning spell. Like I saved up those of the fives for those. Was there a, a, a spell that you crafted where you were like, so basically because we gave you, once you completed that first kind of undead lieutenant, uh, that's when we gave you corruption, gravity, and lightning, right? And, and you had no spells in your inventory, only the cores. So was, was there any moment where you were sort of crafting a spell, sort of saying, hey, I wonder what this is going to be, and then you went and tested it out, and you were like, oh, man, that's awesome. Yes, the lightning spell. Um, I... As all my go-to was the rapid uh, was it target mm -hmm. because uh, was it what I really loved that was that during my blink I could let go of it and when I let go of it because it was rapid target it targeted anyway so I could zip awesome. off to a side to the side. <laughs> yeah. um, the reason why I didn't use the AOE was because I had to target and I'm like I gotta move well, us up and down to blink would actually keep it. Where, where, where you was. were, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I found that out on the oh, I, 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 I thought that I would have uh, was it like moved back and would drag my circle with me, Ooh. and then it would been like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. but once I have it, like the lightning spell, once I uh, was it got that and tested it out, uh, I was like, okay, you're my new go-to spell now. Right after I just, just shock everything since you do continual damage. Right on. And Taylor, I saw you crafting a lot, right? I crafted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. That's cool. I mean, I was like, I, I, you know, some of my 
my favorite games back in the day were like the Mech Warriors, you know? Yeah. Where you could tweak yeah. like all the coolants and just like kind of try and create something really interesting, mm -hmm. you know, before taking out of the field, you know? So sure. I, I really dug that kind of element of it. And I, I agree with you on the sense that like, uh, I was, you know, you, you don't want to waste any good pieces, but at the same time, I kind of like the experience of like figuring out what each spell does, you know? Mm -hmm. And just, uh, and, and seeing even how, you know, within the, whatever you call it, main elements, you know, they can differ a lot. Um, I love figure, uh, I thought gravity and corruption were awesome. I, I thought they were really fun. Yeah. Like putting like a, a blast of gravity at someone charging you is almost like an ice with like, you know, uh, I think it's critical damage multiplier or something like that. Yeah. Which just felt really amazing. Just like stop them with a wall and then like, you know, blast them with something else. Right. What did corruption do? Uh, so I, uh, maybe I was uh, gonna say I think it's if you put more corruption on, it's like either a critical multiplier or like the more corruption you put on someone, the more like I, point yeah. Because I, I know at one point I was hitting people with corruption and doing the little flamethrower move and they were just exploding. And I was yes. like, okay, I was like, this is cool, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so. it, it's probably, that one would probably benefit the most from an explanation text <laughs> like when you're uh, when you're highlighting the core or whatever, but you think of it as a sticky bomb basically with some more complicated properties to it, but you're kind of, you know, corrupting things with, uh, with this corruption, these bugs that end up... Uh, you know, exploding, and so if they kind of reach critical damage, they'll explode to death, and bugs will go out and infect other people and oh, do damage. I had no that's idea. Awesome. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I read it, and it said bugs, and I'm like, well, there was also Try some filler text win? in the menu, though. Like, mm -hmm. I know with one of my high spells, it was like, plus 99, Laura Mips <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, no, totally. That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you found some placeholder text. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just thought about it. I, was, I probably shouldn't have mentioned it earlier. But yeah. No, that's okay. That's good. So um, we're just about out of time, uh, so I think we're, we're going to call it. I, the, the stuff that we learned from watching you guys play, the stuff that, that we learned from your answers, Super, super appreciated. You know, a lot of the things that, that were in the demo that you played this week um, were brand new from the results of the test last week. Uh, and I think the same thing's gonna, gonna happen for next week. So just super helpful for us. Uh, you know, keep an eye out on our, our Facebook page. If, uh, if you've liked us on our website, uh, we'll have some interesting news to, to post pretty soon here. Uh, so thanks again for, for coming out and uh, hopefully you guys are interested in coming back in the future. We really appreciate it. So, thank you. All right, that's the end of this week's play test. <laughs>